Hey everybody, what's going on? Mr. Tony the Dead here, and I have another Blu-ray Reviews video, and I have some DVDs in here as well. And I just want to apologize for the lack of videos lately, because I've been sick. I'm still sick. Cannot get over this cold. Uh, I don't even know if it's a cold. I don't know what it is. But I've been sick for a little over two, two weeks now. In fact, I'm sick while I'm doing this. And it's a good thing you're not seeing the footage before this, because it was a lot of hacking and... and almost throwing up but, but we're gonna get back gonna get past that also stay tuned at the end of this video I'm going to be having a contest where you can win yourself your own edition of the movie Ma on blu-ray from Universal Pictures and we're gonna go to the first review here it's from Arrow Video USA and this is a film by Alfred Soul and that's Alice Sweet Alice now this was a first time watch for me but uh, what this is about it's about this this, this well it's about this killer going around and uh, killing people but it stars a young Brooke Shields and she is the first one to die it's like right in the very beginning of the movie it's at their first communion Karen who's played by Brooke Shields uh, she comes to her untimely untimely death and, and in a kind of a gruesome way and you see what the killer looks like but you don't know who the killer is and then after a while, people are starting to suspect it's her sister, uh, Alice, who is, has, you know, some problems of her own. And, uh, you know, so the whole thing is like seeing who the killer is and trying to find out who the killer is and who's doing all this stuff. Is it Alice? Is it someone else? You know, what's the reason behind all this crap? You know, all this going on. But, yeah, this is a movie from uh, 1976. Um, and... You could tell it's from the 70s. It has a really, a really cool look to it. Um, very, very kind of gruesome too. Very cool looking killer. I've seen the look of the killer before. Like I've seen people, you know, cosplay it and stuff like that. Very cool. Uh, kind of scary, kind of simple, but really neat. Uh, I really actually, I enjoyed this movie. Uh, ending was kind of weird, but... Uh, most of these kind of movies have a weird kind of ending. Uh, there was some very uh, perverted, uh, I don't know, pedophile-ness going on in this movie with the with the landlord, um, which uh, it was just like a little over the top. Um, I meant kind of more than it is, but like it was just like I wasn't expecting it. Um, but yeah, I was surprised to see Brooke Shields only last that long because that's the one thing I heard about. Brooke Shields, like early early movie. I don't know. This might I think it might have been her first movie or something like that. But she was in this, and it's like okay, and she like gets killed right away, you know. And that 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 was the shock to me. I was like, oh wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know she right away. But it's like right in the very beginning, and then you have the rest of the whole movie to figure out shit. But yeah, it uh, it looks good and sounds good. Brand new 2K restoration on here. And uh, there's like a lot of behind the scenes stuff. One of the cool things on here that I really like is that they show the what it is now, you know, like like the location settings. It shows, you know, what it will where it was back then and what it looks like now. And it's a shame because most of it's gone or it wasn't like in this, you know, like like a part of the of the top of the church was actually from this church over here, and then inside the church was actually built up they built up their own you know it it's just and in some places are demolished or they just run down or they're you know it's it's, it's and it's just weird how it was so vibrant back then it was like it's a nice neighborhood and now it's like nothing it's like crap it's just it's a funny and it's a shame how that kind of stuff happens but lots of good stuff on here and i'm going to show you more right now one thing that they have here is a slip cover and i really wish arrow would do more of these Instead of just the plain, you know, case like this, I, I, you know, and of course they have the box sets which are cool, but I love the slip covers. Uh, even if you don't like slip covers, I think these are awesome. I mean, I mean, I don't know, maybe you don't care, but I think they do really, they do a really great job on these slip covers. Very, very cool. But yeah, you get one of these, and then on the back here you have the special edition contents. If you want to pause it now and check them out, you can. In the inside here, you get the Blu-ray, which is Region A. You get a little booklet. And you also get a poster and here's the poster here's one side of it which is like you know the the cover and everything of the new 
new addition here. But down on the back side here, you get this cool little killer kit. Now you could be the killer you've always wanted to be. And it's like what the killer wears and all that stuff in the movie. So that's kind of cool that, you know, Arrow Video, what does it say? Arrow Video presents Alice, Sweet Alice. Like that's, that's kind of cool. I, I, I like this idea for the poster. I think if I was going to hang it up, I definitely would put this side up. What side would you put up? And here you have the sleeve. And here, like I said, here's the new artwork here. But then if you reverse it, it's the old artwork. Now, I think if I was going to put this on display or whatever, I'd put the old artwork since I already have the, sleeve, uh, the slip cover. But if you don't have a slip cover, that's obviously up to you. But I think I like this artwork more. Another cool thing on here with the special features is they have, uh, you know, the alternate Holy Terror, which was the alternate title that it had. Uh, it was It's the Holy Terror television cut. So you could watch the television cut on here as well, which is kind of cool, you know, and Holy Terror. I believe when I was watching this, it didn't come up as Alice, Sweet Alice. I think it came up Holy Terror. I, I don't quite, I don't really remember. Like I said, I've been sick, and I watched this maybe like a week or two ago. But it's pretty cool that you could do that. You know, I, I really like that they put that on these editions that you could watch, like, stuff from on TV. Because people would kill to find that in, like, a, you know, Goodwill or something like that, like Alice, Sweet Alice recorded off TV you know with commercials and that. Now this doesn't have the commercials but it's still cool that you see that cut you know it's pretty cool to do that but yeah Alice Sweet Alice I liked it I, I like this edition I never saw any other edition to this if there is I'm sure there is um, I had it on VHS before and I never watched it but uh, I'm glad I got to finally see it and I, I think it's a uh, I think it's definitely worth a watch and uh, looks good to me and I like it so yeah, that's Alice, Sweet Alice. Next up I have, also from Arrow Video USA, is Cruising. This is with Al Pacino in it. And it's from 1980, and this is a film by William Friedkin. Friedkin? Not really sure how you say it. But uh, this is about this this uh, killer going around in New York City, going into these S&M club bars, and he's, you know, killing people. And so Paul Servino is this cop, and he sends in this rookie... Uh, who's played by Al Pacino, and named Steve Burns, and he sends him in undercover to try and find who, out who the killer is. And this is like a totally different world. It's kind of, it's not, it's, it's not. I think it's his first assignment. It's like his first undercover, big deal kind of thing. And you know, he wants to please the, you know, the boss and everything. And the way the cops do things in this movie is very, um, not right. Yeah, you know, there's the tactics they have are, are very would not not fl not fly nowadays you know what I mean but uh anyway he goes in undercover to try to find out who the killer is and it's like totally different from his world because you know he's not into s and he has to learn about it he has to learn about different things like like different things are like handkerchiefs different colored handkerchiefs in what side pocket in your back pocket what they mean and I'm not gonna say what they mean but uh, you know it's all sexual stuff and it's basically like, you know, all, it's like a, it's a gay S&M kind of thing, and it's, he's totally straight, it's not his world, but he has to do what he can do, you know, to blend in and, uh, you know, convince everybody, and, you know, and, and he's a, kind of built the way that the, the killer has, like, the specific type of person he's been killing, kind of like, they all kind of, like, look the same, and Al Pacino has that build, so that's why he's getting sent undercover to do this. And uh, it's amazing, it's a very young Al Pacino, obviously. But uh, yeah, it was a different type of movie. I was not expecting it. I saw in the back, oh, it's a killer. He's going undercover, S&M bars, whatever. The movie's very out there, um, but it was shot very well. And it was entertaining. Uh, I, I liked it. I liked the movie. Uh, I'm honestly not going to say, I'm not going to say I would watch this like over and over again or anything. But uh, I didn't think it was that bad. Like I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I saw it. You know, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, some of the music was pretty good. The dance scene in this, uh, they get very aggressive dancing. One guy, I think it's because every, like everybody wants to get with him, and he's just like, no, not tonight, not tonight. And then the one guy gets him to dance with him. So Al Pacino, you could tell he's very, like, not he's very uncomfortable and he kind of like does this like weird dancing kind of thing and uh 
he's dancing with him and then he's like looking around he's seeing all this stuff going on and then he starts huffing stuff in a handkerchief he starts to loosen up more then he smiles this guy's all that he's dancing with all smiles and everybody's so sweaty and gross and he's all happy I think because he finally got this guy that everybody wanted to dance with him and Al Pacino starts dancing real real aggressive like and it's just it's just so weird it's a weird scene but it's like my favorite scene in the movie very very strange but um, one thing I would say they probably give away uh, who the killer is a little too soon in this movie um, same thing with Alice Sweet Alice you find out you know the everything way too soon and there's still more of the movie to go and I don't like that I like finding like it the last scene you know Scooby-Doo ending who pull the mask off or who's the killer and they kind of you know do that in this they they reveal too soon of you know who it is because it could be anybody in this because you know everybody there's a lot of weirdos in this like that have bad reputations and stuff like that you know and, and they're all in they're all in s and m so it's all violent kind of stuff i mean violent to me to them it's a pleasure you know it's not my world but whatever but uh yeah I, I thought the movie was was pretty decent though and i know mr parka had recommended this to me a while ago I think he said about when this comes out or if it comes out or something like you should see it you know you'd like it uh, and I did I liked it Shannon watched it she liked it it was, it was good and William Frit Friedrich um, also did the exorcist and the French connection never saw the French connection but connection but we we all seen the exorcist and uh, you know that's some people think is the scariest thing in the world I don't I get it it's freaky yeah, but I don't think it's scary thing. But that's another movie. But anyway, yeah, look good, sounded good. This is a brand new restoration with a 4K scan on the original camera negative, and uh, it was supervised by William Frederick. I, I'm if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Frederick, Frederick. I'm gonna say Frederick. It looks like Frederick. But um, yeah, there's not a ton of uh, special edition contents, but it says it's all director approved. So he saw like, you know. He saw behind us, like, he wanted, this is what I want. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I, I liked it. And, and it was weird, too, was seeing, seeing a young um, Al Bundy was in this. And I'm blanking on his real name, Ed, Ed O'Neill. A young Ed O'Neill was in this. Um, it was like, I think that's Ed O'Neill. Paul Servino's in this. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a, some people that you've seen, but they're, like, young, really young. And like I said, the tactics of the cops would not fly in fact i don't know how they they probably they definitely wouldn't have flown back then but i don't know how it was back then you know i was just born in 1980 but the tactics of the cops in this were were wow like uh that's not gonna work out you know and then you had uh i don't remember his name but it was the guy who played main in maniac he was the main guy uh, I'm totally blanking on his name he was a cop in this, and so was the gas man in Dumb and Dumber. I'm horrible with names. I'm good with faces, but I'm horrible with names. Uh, they were both cops in this, and it was just weird to see the parts that they had. There's a lot of people in this that I've never seen play these type of roles that, you know, did a great job. So that, that was pretty cool. But yeah, um, now I'll show you, you know, the rest of this. And here we have a slip cover here, you know, with the same artwork underneath. Again, love these slip covers. It's just something about them. It, they're they're pretty solid and they're very nice. Um, it's just some of them have a texture to them, like this one doesn't, but some of them really do. Um, some of them have the glossiness and that. But uh, you know, they do a good job with these slip covers. I, I just think instead of just this, I think it just it looks nicer and feels nicer. But that's that. And then you got this here, and on the inside, all you have is a booklet, and the Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray is Region A. And like I said, here's the artwork that you get in the front, but then you get this reversed artwork, and it's the same color scheme, different, obviously, picture. I definitely like the new one better. I mean, this one better, I should say. I don't even know if it's new or what. Uh, it doesn't say who did it, or who made the artwork. Uh, who's responsible for it, but I definitely like this one better 
because that's like they're watching like some pornographic movie and then that's like the killer's hand with the with the knife that he uses um, so that that's you know a cool part of the movie well this is just eh, you know but uh, yeah I definitely like this one better I also watched this with captions on and the captions were good sounded good look good so yeah I definitely would say check this one out it's worth a watch at least one time you know it's a pretty cool who's the killer kind of movie you know and Al Pacino does a good job in this you know uh, it's always cool to see Al Pacino in a movie especially young Al Pacino but yeah it's definitely a different type of movie so yeah that's cruising next up I have here part of the VHS retro style looking you know addition is Roxanne from Mill Creek Entertainment and what this movie is about it's about this guy named CD and he is played by Steve Martin and he has this really long nose and he falls in love with Daryl Hannah who comes to town to study this this comet and they, you know start off with friends and they start off meeting each other in this very strange way but he falls for her and then she ends up falling for somebody that he works with and uh, he's a fire he's a chief at the fire station and uh, like I said she falls for somebody he works with so he decides because nobody knows about his love for her he uh, he the guy asks him to help because the guy is he has the looks but he doesn't have the smarts and it's the total opposite with Steve Martin he, he can write and she's a very an intellect she you know and he wrote a letter for her for him uh, for the guy to her and she loved it so she wants more of this so now the guy wants Steve Martin to help him you know get her get you know because he can't talk it, it to girls either he has this problem where if he talks tries to talk to a girl he'll throw up he'll like run away and throw up and um, so yeah that so it's to even though he's in love with Daryl Hannah's character he's gonna help this guy out to to get her and that's what this is about it's uh, I don't remember what it was called originally I know there's like an old tale to this where um, you know the character with the long nose who like hides in the shadows and has talks to her from the window talks to the girl in the window for the guy and she thinks it's the other guy and I can't remember what that was it doesn't say on here and I didn't look it up to be honest so somebody could tell me that but I remember seeing this movie a long time ago it was uh, from 1987 and I, I, I always liked this movie uh, there were some things nowadays that I while watching this that I got more than I did when it back then and um, not like it was like oh my god I can't believe they said that but I get it now instead of that more than back then like especially like the top the 20 things that he has to say somebody called him big nose and he said he can make up you know more things than that and he's supposed to do 20 of them and I get them now I get the jokes now more than I did then but uh yeah it was it was a it was a good movie Daryl Hannah looked was gorgeous then um, Steve Martin looks exactly the same uh, he always had gray hair for a long you know but uh, he he was so funny in this movie it was it was really good to rewatch this I haven't seen this in so long and it was actually uh, cleaned up very good cleaned up very very well there's no special features on here or anything there's captions but there's no special features um, but yeah it was really cool to see this again and it's really cool that they put it out on this retro um, you know edition here and it is this a slip cover you got that and here's some other artwork inside here and I didn't say it who was directed by but it is directed by Fred I don't know how you say his last name Shepsy Shepsy let's, let's go with that but uh, yeah, so you got this cover artwork here, and uh, she's looking up at her. At least look up at her house, uh, and even I was thinking too, like while well, I was gonna watch this, like oh, you could probably see the the prosthetics around his nose, and even now, even with it cleaned up, it doesn't look too bad. Like it doesn't look too bad. It looks legit. It looks like an actual nose. So I was I was afraid that because of the, you know be on blu-ray and cleaned up and everything you were going to be able to tell maybe there was like a one or 
two times that you could sort of see it but if you weren't looking for it I don't think you would notice it so that was that was good but yeah um and the other guy that was the firefighter his name is Rick Rossovich and the only other movie I remember him in was Top Gun and that's all I could say Top Gun and Roxanne I don't know what happened to that guy maybe he'll be in the the next Top Gun movie that's coming out that'd be cool but um yeah so and Shelley Duvall's in this um, there's a lot of familiar faces uh, Damon Damon Wayne's is in this I believe is it it's is it Damon I think it's Damon um, Fred Willard's in this uh, you know a lot of cool cool faces uh, familiar faces in this uh, you know from the 80s and that. Uh, it's not huge parts but they're in it and it's 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 a it's a fun watch definitely worth watching it's it's a funny movie uh, and it's a love love story and it has a really cool ending and uh, you know you just really feel for Steve Martin's character you just feel this and even uh, Kevin Nealon is in this in the beginning he plays like like cokehead kind of like like a, a, a yuppie in this and he that scene I haven't seen it obviously again I haven't seen that move that part in forever and the shit they say I was like oh my god and it's rated rated PG not sure it's really rated PG but at the time it was but yeah uh, and then on the inside here you, you get the blu-ray and the re it is region a that's it but that's that's all you get you get the blu-ray and that's all on here but yeah I definitely think if you don't have Roxanne uh, on Blu-ray, you know, and you don't care about special features, check this one out. Definitely get it. It has the cool, you know, VHS retro look to it. I like it. And uh, if if you're looking for an upgrade on Blu-ray, yeah, definitely check this one out. Um, so that's yeah, that's Roxanne. Definitely worth a watch. I think it's funny. I always really liked it. I enjoy it, and uh, hopefully you will too. So that's Roxanne. Next up I have here from Mill Creek Entertainment again is The New Kids. This is again part of the v retro VHS style look and uh, you know very cool and I, I've never seen this movie until now uh, but this is about these two kids uh, whose parents ended up they're military brats and their parents end up getting killed so they go and they go in to live with their their uncle in this Santa, Santa land or Santa Claus like kind of it's like a rundown like uh santa claus amusement park kind of thing and they're going to fix it up with them so they go to live with him and you know obviously they're the new kids and there's nothing wrong with them but of course there's these bullies led by james spader a blonde young blonde james spader insane with an accent and uh i believe they're in florida <laughs> and they they uh you know they're they're bullies in this school they're like a couple of them and they're, and they're just jerks and basically they're after uh, Lori what's her name Lori Laughlin who is uh, from Full House they're after her uh, and they want to date and whatever she rejects so that just kind of spirals from there and her brother is also another liked guy well liked person and he uh, you know gets harassed by them all the time and he don't want to take their shit because you know they're his father who was played by Tom Atkins um, which was cool to see Tom Atkins in this and then he gets killed right away in the beginning in a car crash that you don't even see but that sucks is like oh Tom Atkins is this cool and he gets killed but um, so yeah they're 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 just being bullied and, and it just escalates like it's like a snowball effect it gets worse and worse with these kids and just when you think you, they taught them a lesson they come back um, and they're just really like really assholes um, to the point where like they they can't come back you know like what they do this is it like they, there's no turning back from it but like I said you got Lori Laughlin here um, Sh uh, Shannon Presby uh, you got James Spader's in this there's a young Eric Stoltz in this um, there's like uh, like I said Tom Atkins there's a there's a few familiar faces in it I've never seen it before but I always like to see a movie that's a high school movie with with uh, bullies because that's more realistic um, and this this is pretty realistic I mean I I I wouldn't say I was bullied growing up but I did get there I had my share of 
being bullied. It wasn't an everyday occurrence, but I've had assholes in school that, you know, tried to start shit with me. But I was, at back then, I'm not going to take your shit. And all it took was one time, and then they left me alone. But I know that's not the case with, you know, and I'm not saying violence is the answer, because it's not, because nowadays I, 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 the last thing I would ever do is throw a punch unless I had to, but, uh, you know, I know people saying the violence is never the answer, but, you know, certain situations, they, this is crazy, especially, like I said, how this escalates this movie. I never saw this before. I always wanted to get it. I've seen people have it on VHS and that. I don't know if this is on any other edition on Blu-ray or anything, but I'm happy with this one. I think it looked good and it sounded good. There's no special features. Um, I would that would be cool if there was a version that comes out that has some special features like interviews and stuff. But you know this has captions, and that's what I that's what I do. I watch captions. I see how it's the quality is, and you know if I can hear it. And everything sounded and looked good, and the movie was good, especially the like main like whole last half hour of the movie. It's like 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 I said where that's the whole like there's no turning back. It was like a you know there's no turn back. It's like oh shit, like what's gonna happen here? It, it was pretty pretty intense, um, but yeah, I I always like to see high school kind of bully movies. You know, like um, like Three O'clock High. Love that movie, um, even though that's a little unrealistic, I guess. But uh, that would that's a fun movie. But this this is kind of you know it's a thriller. It's not horror, but it's definitely up there with being scary uh, because this is more real life and you know Sean Cunningham who did Friday the 13th did this I believe this is a movie he did after Friday the 13th so um, you know it, it's not super it's not bloody or anything but it does have that scare element where this could happen to you in your school and it could you know I mean worse things have happened in school but uh yeah this is a pretty Pretty crazy, and and if the the sad thing is, all they wanted to do was be left alone, and enjoy their school year, you know, enjoy their friends that they're trying to make, and and these these guys just because she didn't want to bother with them, you know, and they do shit like they go in the house, they'll like kill the kill animals and stuff, and they'll they'll spy on them and stuff, and nobody like really calls the cops on them and that. It's just it's it it amazes amazes me what they get away with in this movie too, which is another scary thing. But yeah, I definitely think this one's uh, worth a watch if you're into like bullies and scary lot, you know, high school kind of thing. But it has a slip cover here. You pull it off. I like that cover. That's the original, obviously VHS cover. That's really really cool. Very very cool cover. And then you have this cover, which I don't like as much don't like as much she looks way too old there I don't know I don't know and then you get the back it just tells you stuff and then you get the blu-ray which is cool because it has the old artwork on it and it's region A so that's cool but I'm not a fan not a fan of that artwork to be honest I don't really like it I think this one is definitely the one to go with and I really like this VHS the way it looks you know they got the cool rated R sticker it is rated R um, and it should be <laughs> not like Roxanne where it says PG I think that should be PG 13 or something maybe not maybe even R I don't even know maybe not PG 13 at least but this one's definitely R but yeah I was so glad that I got to finally see this um, because not that the VHS is rare but I never got it so now I got this got to see it and I enjoyed it and uh, I definitely would watch this one again uh, you know several times and um, definitely worth a watch so if you don't have this uh, you want to upgrade to blu-ray you don't care about special features and all that definitely this is the version for you so yeah that's the new kids next up I have here from the Warner Brothers archive collection is another childhood favorite of mine and that is The Witches, first time on Blu-ray, I believe. And this is directed by Nicholas Rogue. And uh, what this is about, it's about this little boy named Luke who his parents ended up 
getting killed. So he's living with his grandmother, and they decide that they're going to take this vacation or this holiday. And uh, they live in Germany, and I didn't know that growing up, but I always thought they lived in England. So they go to England, they go to this like hotel that's like on a cliff, and uh, run by Rowan Atkinson. And uh, you know, they they go there, and she tells him before that all about these witches that you know, because she has this like stub of a finger. How she, you know, got away from a witch, and that's how that she lost her finger, and witches are real, and and like the beginning is like the, her telling him about what to look out for and how you know which one's a witch from these purple eyes, like a, you get a glint, glint, a glisten, yeah, a glare, kind of, you know, if you will, uh, from their eyes of of, you know, that this purple glare, and uh, you know, they have no front feet, like there's no toes. Uh, and then there's like this story she tells about one little girl that she knew that got, you know, you know caught up with a, a witch, got, you know, taken by a witch, and, and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of scary. Growing up, it was a little scary. Watch it now, it's like, wow, this is kind of scary for kids. But anyway, she go, they go on this holiday, you know, to take his mind off of things. And while they're there, they don't realize that the meeting, there's this meeting with this it's supposed to be this children foundation and the whole children foundation is run by witches and the main head witch the uh, high witch or whatever uh, is in charge played by Angelica Houston and they have this plan that there's this liquid and the liquid is going to be turning these children into something I'm not gonna say what they're gonna turn them into turn it into something and uh, that's how they want to get rid of all the children in England and throughout the whole world so now it's up to Luke to save the day and stop the witches from doing this. And it's kind of like this wild ride um, go throughout the whole movie. Um, it, it's I like it just as much as when I was little, I'll be honest. Um, again, being older, you understand things a little more. And when I was younger, I didn't. Like, I didn't understand when... <laughs> Rowan Atkins, uh, Atkinson is, uh, Atkins, Rowan Atkins, uh, is, is, um, with this girl, and she's part of the staff, and they kind of trying to keep it quiet, and she finds one of those bottles, and she puts it on, she thinks it's like perfume, and she puts it on, and when he goes to kiss her neck, he's like repulsed, and she's like, what, what is it, and then she goes to the mirror, and you see something, I didn't understand what happened when I was little and now I'm older like I I knew later on but like now I'm older I, I understand I'm like oh that's why he didn't want to kiss her neck okay so you know it's kind of I don't know I was 10 years old what do you want I didn't understand about that shit um, I didn't like girls like you know back then but you know it is what it is but like certain things like I didn't know they were in Germany uh, I, I thought they were in England again I didn't know about this stuff but uh, there's like the story in the beginning about a little, like a little girl who uh, want, like she's on her way home and the witch takes her and there's like this painting that the father admires and the little girl ends up in the painting and you see her grow older in the painting and one day she's old and vanishes. That's scary. Like, could you imagine that? Your child is taken. Then one day this child, your child ends up in the painting at, you know, painted in there that was never there before and then it doesn't just she doesn't just stay in one position here this today she's here tomorrow she's feeding the ducks the next day she's in the window the next day she's down by the river like she's hanging up clothes like she's living her life in a painting and who knows what it looks like to her maybe she could see looking out they never dis distinguish that they never say what the little girl can see if she could see you looking at her which would kind of be cool you know if you could you would know that but maybe it's best that you don't because it's kind of scary but then she you just like imagine seeing your kid in this painting and you can't do anything about it and who's going to believe you and then one day the kids you know just vanishes i mean you're probably dead by then but the you die then what your kids in this painting like what do you do i i I don't know, I think I'd go insane.
I think I would absolutely go insane. But that was that's scary, like to think about that. I know it's unrealistic, but if that were real, that's scary shit. And watch this when you're a kid, like being like, don't it's basically don't wander off or else a witch could get you and you can end up in a painting. It's kinda like one of those like don't wander off warning kind of things for kids. You know, that's the way you're supposed to look at it. It's a warning. And then the shit that happens to like Luke and his friend, um, um, oh god, what's his name? Well, his friend in the movie. It's gonna, it'll come to me. But um, you know, Bruno Jenkins, that's his name. See how, ah, oh, Bruno Jenkins. He he's a character in this too. That's what I think. If I were in this movie, that'd be me. I'd be the Bruno. Like you know, he's the one who's eating everything. But anyway, yeah, I I enjoyed this movie. Uh, it's definitely. It says it's PG. Again, I don't know how this is a PG movie. This is at least PG-13. Or somewhere in between that and R. Like, you, it's definitely at least a PG-13. It's kind of freaky. But, uh, yeah, Rowan Atkins, Atkinson, uh, he, did a, he did a great job in this. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Rowan Atkinson. I don't know why I keep saying Rowan Atkins. I don't know. I've got Tom Atkins on the brain, and I'm, trying, I'm mixing them up. But yeah, um, definitely glad to see this. I thought it looked good and it sounded good. There's no special features on this, unfortunately. Um, there's captions, of course. But, you know, with the Warner Archives, all you need is the movie and the captions. And a good, you know, good looking quality picture and sound. And that's what you get. And it's really cool that, that this finally came out. Um, you know, I had the Blue or the VHS for a long time. And that's how I've only ever seen it. I've never seen it. Well, and TV. I've never seen the DVD, but I'm so glad that this is out now on Blu-ray. It looks good, and, and uh, you know, I was very excited. So, yeah, I definitely check the witches out. Angelica Houston does a great job in this. Everybody did a good job. I don't know what this the Luke kid did now and does nowadays or did after this. I never seen him in anything else. I haven't looked them up what he did, but uh, I'd like to see if he did anything else. I'm sure he did. He was a, a a good little actor I thought he was a likable kid he wasn't annoying um, you know but Angelica Houston of course we all know her and Rowan Atkinson we all know him but same thing with the Bruno kid I don't know what he did but yeah I, I, I think the setting it was pretty scary there was a well, there is one scene that's kind of disturbing where she Angelica Houston pushes a baby carriage down it's gonna go off a cliff like how is this PG <laughs> She's going to basically kill a baby, like, by pushing it off a cliff into the ocean while all the witches, like, to, that are around, they're going, oh, they're all excited and thrilled and clapping and yelling and happy and, oh, baby, ah, you know, laughing. It's like, wow, I, I remember that part, but I don't remember it being so sadistic. It's crazy, crazy. But, and also, all men, all, uh, children stink to them the cleaner you are the more you smell so there's that so remember that if you're dirty you probably don't smell to a witch they probably don't smell you they smell like shit literally smell like dog shit to, to them <laughs> but anyway yeah so the witches glad I got to watch it again after so long and uh, if anything it's just as scary maybe scarier um, see so yeah I think it's gonna be a little a few years still let my son watch this um, but yeah so yeah, definitely check this one out. I like it, still like it. I have liked it my whole life. And uh, yeah, that's The Witches. Next up I have here from Epic Pictures and Dread Central is a movie called Hoax. And this is directed by Matt Allen. And what this is about is about these uh, this investigated team that's going up there to shoot this, movie, uh, this TV show uh, to find proof that there is a real Bigfoot. And the reason they're going up there is because previously there were these young campers and they were up there and they end up getting viciously killed. So that's the the why they're going up there, like to going up to the same place of where this they think that this that's it's a Bigfoot that killed them. Other people say it's a, a bear and you know it's some sort of animal, but this other people are convinced it's a Bigfoot, so they get this team together to go up there and shoot this TV show while actually wanting to find proof that there is a Bigfoot and well shit happens and uh, you know 
a Bigfoot is around, stuff happens to people, and then it goes from there. And while they're sh trying to shoot this TV show, and you know this this movie has Brian Thompson in it, and that's enough for me to want to watch it. If that's not enough, Adrian Barbeau's in this, which is you know another awesome face. You got Ben Broder, who's from Farscape. I've never watched Farscape, but he did a good job in this as well. Uh, you know, a lot of likable people, to be honest. Um, the one guy in this is from Zombievers, and I remember him in the Zombievers. I can't think of his name, but he was likable in that movie, and he's likable in this. He's the cameraman. Like, pretty much everybody in this is, is very likable. Even even the uh, the uh, interviewer, the, uh, um, the, the girl who's like this snobby bitch, she's kind of likable. I don't know. Like, she's definitely an asshole, her character, but she's likable. I don't know what it is. Um, she's just as likable. But yeah, uh, good cast of characters, good story. I, I like Bigfoot movies. They all are kind of the same, you know, because, because it's such a mystery, but there's always the viciousness and the, the you know, their theories behind it or how they're going to try to find out if there really is one. And they go through all that in this. Um, good ideas too, um, especially the guy who's been doing it since like the like the seventies. Uh, you know, he's a he's a good character as well. But you know, it it then there's like this. The last bit of the movie takes an incredibly big turn that I was not expecting. And the only way, without ruining the movie, that I could say is it's it's kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's like that big of a turn of a turn. One thing I could say about this movie too is that it looked really nice. The settings in the movie were really nice, like uh, the sunsets, uh, the nighttime shots were good. I thought, you know, uh, it seemed pretty authentic that it was nighttime, not just like a light shining and it's dark, it's supposed to be dark. Uh, you know, I I thought I thought everything looked good and I thought it sounded good, but not just quality wise I mean visually you know how they shot it I think it looked really good um, I wish you would have seen more of the Bigfoot um, but what happens to people was was okay too and then like I said the whole Texas Chainsaw vibe was totally out of left field and I was not expecting it and I liked it. I gotta say, I did like that. Um, the movie itself, I thought was okay. I wasn't blown away by it, to be completely honest. Um, I I watched it. And I thought, yeah, it was good. I liked it. But I honestly don't know if I'd watch it again. Maybe. <laughs> it, I don't know. Like I wouldn't say it was uh, not worth watching again. You know, but. Uh, it just didn't blow me away. Like I've seen other Bigfoot movies that I liked more, uh, and this it didn't have any funny elements to it or anything like Cherokee Creek, you know, um, which is fine. You know, it doesn't have to have that. It didn't really have any of that. Brian Thompson had some some one-liners in it that were were you know funny. Um, there were like I said, like everybody was likable, so that's good too. So I would say watch the movie if you want um, but for me I probably wouldn't watch it again but I'm glad I saw it because I wanted to see it uh, when I, you know the trailer looked good Brian Thompson's in Adrian Barbeau has a small part don't you? if you're gonna watch it just for her she has a super small part in this movie um, but yeah everybody in the movie was like I said I, I, I say it, I said it a few times already but it's they're likable and I feel like that's a very important thing because the movie could be great, but if the cast is, isn't likable, I'm not going to enjoy the movie. And even though I didn't really think this movie was amazing, I didn't hate it, you know? Because the cast um, were enjoyable to watch, and they did a good job. And uh, they were all pretty convincing of their roles in the movie. Maybe not so much Brian Thompson. Uh, I don't know. He's an ex-marine out there for security. He's still jacked, and he's huge, but he's one guy. And I really don't know how 
if the, how unbelievable it is that they would get him out there to be the main security guy and when he's like today's technically his birthday is actually his birthday is today when I'm recording this he's 60 years old happy birthday so when they shot this he was like I don't know 58 59 I don't know exactly know when they shot it within the last two years I guess so I don't know that's like uh, at my son's school they have a security guard who is this short like 60 some year old woman who the hell is she chasing that's just how I feel with, with Brian Thompson's character in this not that he couldn't chase somebody but I would just assume it wouldn't just be him you know but I don't want to put Brian Thompson down anymore it is his birthday and he'll probably he could kill me he was in Cobra and he probably has that knife he'll probably slit my throat but anyway yeah I'll show you you know what's in here and here we have the front cover here I do like that cover it's very cool it's very predator-ish in fact there's a lot of scenes in this that are like the predator because they're looking at night vision and I don't know I like that and here's the other reversible artwork I like both of them to be honest I think I like this one more but this one's not bad you know but I do like this over here on the back better than that that's just me and there are special features if you want to pause it now and check them out you can also this is number 18 in the dread central you know collection if you're collecting them this is number 18 and here is the blu-ray I do like that handprint the blood running down but that is the blu-ray and that is region free so yeah that's hoax not sure if I'd watch it again but uh, I think it's worth a watch so there you have it that's hoax next up I have here from while I releasing is the Velocipaster and this is written and directed by Brendan Steer and this is about this priest who witnesses his parents die in a car crash and um, he ends up going to China to find out you know find out life you know you know figure his life out and while he's there he ends up getting infected by this like mysterious kind of uh, tooth and he gets this ability to turn into a dinosaur and with this ability he uses the dinosaur to destroy evil and in his neighborhood and all that kind of stuff so that's the the plot of the story and uh, you know this movie based on the title alone it's ridiculous it's not taking itself seriously the movie the movie is pretty funny to be honest it definitely has a lot of laughable moments and they do it and, and, and it's not like oh my god it's so bad it's funny they're trying to be funny and it worked at least I hope they're trying to be funny it worked but it it really uh, it, it really had a lot of funny moments to it even in the trailer watching the trailer for this it had to, we laughed a few times thinking about it I'm laughing just like he he said she said something to him about like uh, you're you were a dinosaur or something like that and he's like what and that like slowly zooms in on him and he goes what like that it was so funny um but like it's it's a it's a very ridiculous movie it, it like there's laughing in it that they ridiculously laughing like the evil the evil um villain laugh and then ha 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 and they keep going it's it's a, there's a lot of funny elements to this the whole reasoning behind him turning into a dinosaur is ridiculous and when you see what he first you don't really see him too much as a dinosaur you see some claws or you know a glimpse of the head but the main like time you see him as the dinosaur it's just ridiculous it's obviously an outfit and it's not as ridiculous as a giant t-rex blow-up outfit but it's close to it and you just have to laugh you just have to have a good time and laugh at this movie because it's this dinosaur kind of trying to do karate moves and, or you know fight I should say he's fighting against ninjas and stuff and it's just wow I mean I saw Velocipaster it's like I have to see this you know I don't care about the Sharknado movies 
I don't give a shit. After the first or second one, I, I mean, they're, they're stupid and fun. But after they make five or so, it's like, alright, this is dumb. But when I see a Velocipaster, I have to see it. You know, I just have to see it. And I, I gotta be honest, I had a good time watching this. It was fun. Would I watch it again? Sure, if somebody put it on. Am I in a rush to, like, look on, at my Blu-rays and say, there it is, I'm putting it in? No. I'm going to be completely honest. But it was fun. It made me laugh. And I enjoyed it. So I have no regrets watching this movie. Um, and it actually looked and sounded good. You know, and um, one of the churches in this, uh, I believe, was shot in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. So I might even drove past it. I believe the, the writer, the director, I believe, I don't know if he was born in Pennsylvania or if he just lived in Pennsylvania for a little bit. But either way, he has some, you know, Pennsylvania homage in, in here. So, and I kind of thought that too. Like, some of it looked like Pennsylvania. A lot of things look like Pennsylvania. Like, things get shot on uh, in New York somewhere, you know. And I think, oh, that looks like Pennsylvania. And it's like, it's in New York. Well, it's still East Coast. It's close. But, because uh, it has a certain look to it. And it's just like, it's like, wow, that looks like... A road I drove on and a lot of things in this look like around my area not completely right in my area but Stroudsburg isn't that far away so that was cool too to see that um, but yeah it's movies pretty pretty friggin ridiculous and it's fun it is a, a fun movie it's is it good no not really but I'm sure they had a fun time making it and I sure as hell had a good time watching it. I laughed out loud. I literally LOL'd um, out loud. <laughs> and that doesn't like happen a lot. You know, I might chuckle, you know, like, you know <laughs> chuckle, or, or like, uh, you know, laugh to myself or something, or think it's funny. But like, for me to like, actually like, ah, you know, I did it. I did it with this. And, uh, I have no regrets watching this. Look good, sounded good, but the captions were off. They were like like a few seconds behind. That's the one. And now I don't know if that's just this or my TV, but I watched several movies through that I was going to review that day, and this is the only one that it was off. So I think the captions are off a little. It it, it happens, but the good thing is. The sound was loud enough, like you could understand them enough, that you didn't really need the captions. I just like to watch the, with captions because, you know, just to test it out. And I don't, you don't really need the captions, to be honest. So, unless you, you know, are deaf. But, yeah, Velocipaster. I lost my train of thought there. The Velocipaster. Yeah, I, I think if you're looking for a just a ridiculous movie that is fun and you just doesn't take itself seriously and you're just like you know what I don't know what to watch I'm just gonna put this in just put it in even background put it in the background like look at it every once in a while if you really want to but I would say definitely check this one out I think um, it's only 75 minutes um, and I think that works that's long enough the ending does go on a little too long Maybe it could be cut a little bit. I think maybe it could be cut by 10 minutes. It could, you know, something like that. But, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, the Velocipaster, I I would say check it out. It's it's fun. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you the inside here now real quick. There you have the artwork in the front, which is pretty cool. I like it. Looks nothing like that. You know, pretty, pretty, pretty off, you know. Uh, and then you got the back here show some things pretty cool you know I like I do like this guy played a really good part the, uh, he had like this look to him and when he was changing into like the the Velocipaster he had like like the the eyes and that it looked really scary in the teeth it looked pretty cool and there's the blu-ray and that is region a B and C next up I have here also from wild I releasing is a movie written and directed by Stephen Wolf and that is Doll Factory. And what this is about is about these group of teens that break into this factory and they 
have this book and then what they do with the book they end up summoning the this dolls to life that go around and wreak havoc on the town and and kill people in within the town um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that the movie is ridiculous uh, I what do I like it I'm just gonna get to do I like it not really um, I like the ending I like the ending there were a lot of annoying characters in this to be honest too much dialogue at times um, the dolls talked which can be fine but I kinda like it where they don't talk but they were high like like high-pitched talking dolls and it was obvious that they were like hand hand puppets um, they all were run by this man the master who looks like Mr. Boogity and he was I don't know there's a, like with him that the makeup looked fine except around his eyes there's no it's like you, you could see he was a guy with makeup on and there's no black around his eyes why they couldn't have filled that in is beyond me but I don't know there's there's likable characters but then there's not likable um, there's a lot of there were some funny lines um, but it got to the point where everything was a perverted you know comeback and that kind of got over the top um, the idea you know behind the movie whatever it's it was fine I you know I wasn't going in as expecting it to be a masterpiece or anything and at first it was kind of fun but it was it's it's it went on too long for me it's an hour and a half way too long of a movie uh, for this kind of thing I think this could have been cut by 20 minutes uh, and I think it would have been perfect um, but there's like I said there's way too much dialogue in this and uh, but the kills were pretty cool and the effects on them were cool you know very bloody looking was so that was that was cool the dolls creepy as hell you know I'm not creeped out by dolls but I could see somebody being creeped out by these things but again they kind of sound like um, not bubbles but conky they kind of sound like conky from trailer park boys that's what they were they sound exactly like conky um, except a little high more high pitched <laughs> which I don't know it's funny but the, you know you got bonus features commentary track gag reel concept trailer behind the scenes feature it and other trailers but uh, and and not that the that the actors did bad or anything just their characters were just assholes they didn't like them and there was this one guy I can't think of his name um, but he he was this uh, I think his name is actually Bougay and he was this black guy in the beginning and he was it was showed like from the 1970s in this factory and they stopped it so now it's nowadays and it came back and he's like one of the guys that can help to stop it again and he had he was funny at times but it was like non-stop with him where it was just like these one-liners and and stuff it was it kinda got like on my nerves so you know with all that being said I don't know if I would say you have to say, see this movie um, I don't regret seeing it I had a fine time watching it you know uh, it took me honestly two sittings to finish it but you know if it was just cut down a little bit on the dialogue um, I think it was fine like again the ending I thought the ending was pretty cool and uh, the effects were cool but characters again ruined that for me and um, I didn't like them I kinda wish all the dolls didn't look the same I w it's a doll factory but I kinda wish there was other different looking ones you know like like puppet master they're all different looking or or like you know demonic toys or shit like that or even like ghoulies like they all of them all they all look differently you know uh, one exception is critters of course but like even those they even actually nowadays critters have different looking critters but like the dolls I just wish there were different looking ones I think there were one actually maybe there was one doll that was different I don't remember but there was one funny part where and it's you know stoner comedy uh, stoner humor which I'm okay with. I don't 
I'm not against it or anything, but like I'm not like a I'm not a a pothead or anything, you know. I'm not against people that are like that, but like I can't relate to it, you know. Like uh, sitting around and being high all day, and then like something comes in that's gonna kill them, and then he ends up getting high with them, and now he's not gonna kill them. Like it, it it's it was a funny part, and like, those guys were likable to be honest, but. It just, I've seen that a few times, and I, I'm just not, I'm not into the whole, you know, drug humor thing. It can be fun. I love Pineapple Express. Don't get me wrong. I love that fucking movie. But I can't relate to them. You know, I can't relate to, I need to, I need to smoke, you know, a, a bong before I play in a band or something. Like, I was never like that. But if you are, that's fine. I don't care. I like, I'm I'm more of an edibles guy, but <laughs> um, and I'm all for medical marijuana and that for you know anxiety and helping you sleep. But I don't know. I just in a movie it's just it's the typical pothead humor. And I don't know. Maybe it just I've just seen it so many times. It's just you know I'm over it. But yeah, I would say you don't really have to see this movie. Uh, but this is region zero, so region free, so that's cool. And uh, you know, it didn't look it was it looked good and it sounded good. So there's that. And so and if you're interested in like another killer killer doll kind of movie, you know, check this one out. I guess so. But uh, for me, I'm not gonna watch it again, to be honest. But I don't regret seeing it. But again, you heard all you heard all my stuff. So that's doll factory and next up we have here from wild eye releasing as well written edited and directed by todd sheets is clown nato that's right the hits keep coming clown nato and uh it's not what you think it's not a tornado or uh full of clowns like a shark nato not exactly uh, this movie is about this group of clowns you know i don't know if there's a name for a group of clowns clusterfuck I guess um, they have clowns and they're kind of sadistic and everything the main clown um, Ronnie his girl is kind of like uh, fooling around on him with another guy and you know he's kind of connected with things and everything you know it's sadistic behind the scenes of the circus and he ends up putting her in the show where he's going to be throwing darts at her and stuff like that so she wants something done about this, so she goes to like this witch, and she, what the witch ends up doing is casting this spell on all the clowns, and it captures them inside of this tornado. And so that happens, and now the girl is going to leave town and everything. So now there's this other cast of characters that come in, uh, likable characters, Linnea Quigley, is has a small part in this she's like the owner of this bar and they're in this bar there's this um guy that's dressed up as elvis this black guy <laughs> he's a very likable character they're all kind of likable characters to be honest um then they're in the bar stuff happens and you know more characters get together and then they're in this diner and shit happens and that's when this cl this clown nato comes in and the clowns are there again and they start fucking like killing people in very very vicious and ravenous ways and it's a one of those extreme um i don't know what the word is extreme movies like it's a lot of like literally a lot of guts and blood and squeezing shit like and eating it and all that kind of stuff like it's it's not for the um you know faint of heart is that the word uh, if you have a, a weak stomach, probably couldn't watch this. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of, like, cutting legs off and all that kind of stuff. Like, very extreme kind of things like that. Um, and the clowns are very sadistic. And uh, Ronnie, uh, the main clown, he's a little much. He talks way too much, I think. Uh, he does have some funny lines that he says, but I, I don't like him. I think he's annoying as hell. Um, I think the the other clowns are are pretty scary. One clown in it, the guy, he wears glasses, 
like normal glasses and I'm sure that the guy needs the glasses but for the scenes I don't know if he again he probably needs the glasses it's just weird to see a clown with glasses on it's that didn't make it wasn't believable for me I thought the makeup on the clowns were pretty cool um, Ronnie's the wig that he wore for this for his clown I, I don't know it's someone with that wig annoyed the hell out of me too but he was very sadistic it worked you know you didn't trust him um, but the uh, the one clown a female clown that was played by I'm gonna say it wrong Kate Phoenix Phoenix I don't know how you say it. I'm very sorry if you're actually watching this but uh, she she uh, was very sadistic and, and hot <laughs> I'm sorry I, I don't know I never realized I had a thing for female clowns before uh, until I saw her weird I don't know off topic wow I don't know anyway yeah so she she looked pretty hot in this movie and uh, I've seen her in other things from like the sleaze box and uh, I always liked her in, every, in, in anything I've seen. Uh, you know, she plays a good part. Um, it's got to be something to be able to, like, do the things you do in these movies. Like, uh, like I don't know what the stuff is that they're, like, she's eating stuff out of people. I don't know what it is, but it looks disgusting. It, for all you know, it could be hot dogs or, or, or jello or something. But it just looks disgusting. So I'm thinking, oh, that's gross and gutting, and she's doing it, you know. It, but yeah, I'm, she, she did good. All the clowns did good. There was like the there's the the bigger clown in here who's very scary looking, and then something happens where it's like uh, one of the clowns dies, and another clown comes out of them, which is a smaller clown, and he's riding this like it's not a bicycle, it's like a motorized bike and and he is he's hilarious like he's very he's scary and sadistic but funny and then like they want them to like, go in there and he's like no mm -mm, mm -mm. and he's like go and, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, none of them want to go into this like like i think it was a sh uh air vent or something and he's like uh-uh he didn't want to go it was like they, they they were funny but they they weren't funny clowns like they they were very sadistic they weren't uh circus of the dead clowns where it was like just like they it's hard to c compare that because they were just out to kill everything and everybody these clowns at first it seems like they were just out to torture her and, and then like because of this tornado net they're like fuck it we're gonna kill everybody and that's what they did anybody that got in their way not all of the acting was great I will say that um, there was some stale moments in it or you know really bad acting that were in the movie kind of things but it is what it is and but I, I did I did enjoy it I gotta say I'll be honest I did like clown NATO uh, I, I I'm okay with it just being these clowns that are in this tornado that land you know and then they're there uh, but I think it would have been cool if it was like a whole mess of clowns just <laughs> trapped in the tornado and they fly off and like, you know. But then that's kind of like, like, how realistic is it for sharks? I guess a shark could get caught in one of those and, and whatever. But like, I'm sure if a bunch of clowns were in it, it would, they would die. But at least this had some kind of L, like special, um, you know mystical element behind it for the reason why because it's like why the fuck are clowns in a tornado and then it's like okay because of a witch that makes more sense now i know uh i i like the movie uh todd sheets like i said made this movie and i i think people are are hit or miss with him i don't have as much of an opinion about his movies because i haven't seen many i I can't think of any others that I've really seen. If I've seen them, I didn't really know, know it was him. Um, but I like Clown Nato, and I, I've seen people give Todd Sheets movies like a, a lot of shit. 
and I don't know why. Like, I, again, I, I haven't seen the other ones, but I thought this one was, wasn't bad. Uh, again, it has the extreme element to it. It, it was, uh, the, you know, what you expect. It's low budget. Not all the acting was great, um, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I sat there, watched it, and, you know, I don't regret seeing it. <laughs> In fact, uh, when I saw Clownado, I, I have to see Clownado, just like the Velocipaster. I have to see the, something called the Velocipaster. Uh, but Clownado, I have to see that. And it, it, was, it, was, it was fun, you know. It was ridiculous. Uh, it Again, it was 90, it's 99 minutes. It's a little long. Again, I know people complain about that. Oh, it's a lot, lo it's too long for you, you know. Well, fuck you, pal. Fuck you. Because if I say, it, if I think it's too long, it's too long. A movie could be three hours long, but it could be enjoyable. Like, Endgame is three hours long. That's too long. But... It works because if it was any shorter, there it would have been even more unexplained shit. This 99 minutes definitely could have been cut down uh, by at least a half hour, you know, maybe 20 minutes, something like that. Um, and I, I don't even know what they could cut. Definitely uh, dialogue, and there's like a whole scene at the end, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's so long because there's so much gruesome in it I don't know I really don't know what they could cut um, definitely some dialogue though and uh, some extra long scenes but off the top of my head I can't think of what exactly but you know what I had a good time watching this and <laughs> I'd probably watch it again to be honest but yeah I I, I would say give it a shot uh, it's not to obviously be taken seriously another one of those and if you're afraid of clowns, get the fuck over it and watch Clown NATO. Now I'll quickly show you the cover here. And here you have the cover Clown NATO. That's pretty cool. I like it. Not bad. I like, you know, you got both sides. I thought it would be kind of like, you know, desert and like winter, but it's not like that. But still, pretty cool. And then you got the back here. Pretty scary looking clowns. You know, I'm not afraid of clowns, but. They're pretty creepy looking. You know, pretty cool though. And you got the Blu-ray in here, which is just... Or I'm sorry, the DVD, which is that image. And it's region zero, so region free. I also like the font for Clownado. I like the, the way that looks on the spine. I don't know, I just, I just think that's pretty cool. Like, I've done that in Photoshop and that before. Like that, you know, raising it and that. So it's easy to do, but it, it, looks, it looks nice, which is why I do it. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that that, with the yellow on the side of that, it looks cool. I don't know, there's something about it. But, yeah, Clownado, why the hell not? Take a look. Let me know what you think about it. If you've seen it or if you're going to see it, let me know. So, yeah, that's Clownado. And last up I have here from Universal Pictures is a movie directed by Tate Taylor, and that is the movie Ma. And, by the way, at the end of this review, uh, you know, I'll tell you how you can win your own copy of the blu-ray so stay tuned but anyway this movie is about this woman named sue ann and she is um this loner in the town of ohio and she gets asked by this group of teenagers to buy booze for them so she says okay yeah you can buy it. i'll buy it for you and then they ask her another time and she says okay i'll buy it for you but you gotta follow me so she, lure, like, well, I shouldn't say lure, but she does. She kind of lures them to her house, and she says, I don't like the idea, basically, like, of you out there drinking and then driving home. You know, I don't, like, want that on my conscience. So I'm going to, I'll let you just drink in my basement and, you know, give me your keys. And when I think you're sober enough to drive, you know, home and that, you can. So, you know, have your, your fun here and do whatever you want. The only rule she has is, like, no taking the Lord's name in vain, no going upstairs, no, you know, getting stuff on, on the on the floor, and uh, obviously no leaving until, you know, she says it's okay. So they're like, you know, this is great, they got a place to party in that, and then quickly things start to kind of spiral and go downhill as they see the true Sue Ann come out, 
and I'll tell you what, I, I never saw this before. I saw people get, um, like, promotional items for this, like her, this hat she wears and that. And I was like, what is this movie, Ma? I have never heard of it before. Now, Octavia Spencer, I've seen her in plenty of movies. Fantastic actress. She does a fantastic job in this. Everybody did a great job in this movie. Um, but she did, she was the shining star in this movie. She, she was very uh, sadistic and likable at the same time uh, the way she can change her facial expression in an instant is is something else like, like she's all like I'll smile and then like, the second that person turns her head she'll instantly drop that that Octavia Spencer unapproving face on her on Sonia you know um, but she did an excellent job very likable character and then they go into her past which gives you an idea of why she is the way she is, and that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to ruin anything. But it's very, very, a very, very cool movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, these, it's, it's not a horror, but the ending it kind of gets turns, turns it up a lot. You know, it turn, it's, it's not like scary, like, like uh, you know, serial killers or uh, like Jason or Freddy kind of scary. But it's definitely, you know, something that could happen, I guess, in a way. Because uh, you never know, people could change. Um, but, yeah, it, it was definitely something I wasn't expecting. And I really did enjoy this movie. I'm not just saying that because, you know, Universal sent this to me. And I'm going to be saying, you know, being able to give somebody a copy of their own. Um, I, I, you know me, I tell the truth. But Shannon and I sat down and watched this. And at the end, and she's she's more honest than I. I mean, I'm honest, but she's like, I don't know, she's dead honest, you know. She she's very blunt, I guess that's the word. But I I, I always tell, ask her how, what do you think? And she's like, she's like, ex awesome movie. Like I think she even put online, awesome fucking movie or something like that. And so and that's rare for her to do that. So she really enjoyed this. And like again, Octavia Spencer just steals the show. And um, it, it all the kids were were likable in it. They were your typical teens. Juliette Lewis is also in this, as does uh, the one girl's mom. And uh, you know, she she I always like seeing her and everything too. Um, there were some other faces like these kids. I I don't watch a, a ton of TV shows. I watch what I watch what I watch. And the, some of these kids were in TV shows and uh, or other movies there, something that I haven't seen before. So. Being that I like them in this movie, I definitely want to watch them in other things. So that's cool too, you know. Now that I, I discovered new talent, you know. So there's something to, there's something to to uh, look forward to, you know. Young talent, and hopefully they stick with it because they all did an excellent job in this movie, and it was it was definitely a good time. And the way this ends, there's the ending, and then there's an alternate ending which are both okay to me like I'm okay with how it ended and if it would have ended with the alternate ending I would have been okay with that too which doesn't happen a lot either because a lot of times the alternate ending when you see in a movie like on on a disc it's like oh I'm glad they didn't go with that or like a, an edited scene or like a deleted scene be like I could see why they cut that well I'm I'm glad with how this ends but I would have been okay with the alternate ending too. I think either one works, and and I'm, um, and it kind of, but it kind of does end abruptly, in a way, but it works. I don't know. It's just, it was, it was a pleasant surprise as I didn't hear anything about this uh, until I saw the people getting promotional items, and I did not get a promotional item, which is okay because I don't wear hats. I wear many hats, but I don't wear physical hats because my head gets too hot <laughs> but I would have wore a hat that said sexy on it because I am sexy but yeah um, but Octavia Spencer she I don't know uh, she is she is sexy I don't know what it is about her but I find her very attractive um, but she's very likable she's a very likable person especially in in that whatever that movie it was that she's like eat my shit that's like our, our line around here. We talk about Octavia Spencer. Also, she looks like my aunt. 
Uh, I'm not going to show my a picture of my aunt, but my aunt makes that face. Like, it's 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 uncanny. But yeah, so my aunt, I have a, I have my own Octavia Spencer's unapproving face, a disapproving face, uh, you know, for my aunt. So, uh, which is awesome. But my aunt loves me, so that's that's good too. But yeah, mom, ma, you know, from the producer to get out on Halloween. I would definitely say check this one out. Uh, pleasant surprise. Went into this blind, didn't watch a trailer, nothing. Came out of it liking it. Definitely would watch this again and had a lot of fun with it. Not just saying it because they sent it to me. I'm saying it because it's the fucking truth. Definitely like these kind of movies. But yeah, let me show you, you know, more about this. Now this version here, I'm sure there's going to be other versions. But here, this one has a slip cover and you go, and you get that underneath. And then, you know, it's the same thing on both sides here you got that and you got that it's the same thing pretty much and here you have the DVD and the blu-ray and I'm not actually sure what their regions are I can't find it on here but uh, if I do find it I'll put it down in the description box this also comes with a digital code and I took my digital code out so I didn't want everybody to see it no you can't have it it's my copy but you can win your own copy of this so you can get your own digital code and let me tell you how all you gotta do is in the comments section on YouTube on my video you gotta go to my channel you gotta be a subscriber one th that's one be a subscriber and two just put below I wanna win that's it you gotta put that below and then I will draw a winner and then I will contact the winner and I don't know if I'll do a video for it or not. Maybe I will, probably. Uh, but I'll I'll draw the winner, and then we'll go for and I'll contact the winner there, and we'll go from there. And you know, Universal will send you out your movie. So that's all. That's all you gotta do. Just be a subscriber to my YouTube channel, and on this video, with this review video, just write, "I want to win." That's all you gotta do. Easy, easy peasy. But yeah, like I said about Ma though definitely check this one out it's it was a pleasant surprise I was not didn't know what to expect going into this like I said I didn't see any trailers or anything and I enjoyed the hell out of it and I would watch this again and it's not because they sent it to me it's because it's one of those type of movies that is very cool and I would definitely watch it again not too many bonus features to be honest but that's okay I'm fine with that but uh yeah definitely check this one out and thank you to uh, Universal for sending us over and allowing me to have this contest for one of my viewers to win. That's awesome. So yeah, that's Ma. Well, that is it, everybody. We made it. We made it through. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Don't forget to enter the contest. Also, please make sure you subscribe, especially if you're entering the contest. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, like I said, and you know follow me on any one of the social media links in the description box below I'm not sure how long I'll have the contest probably have it for at least two weeks maybe a week and uh, then I'll decide you know how I'm gonna do the contest if I'm gonna put a video up or not but just stay tuned and the best way to, to find that out is to be a subscriber so there you go benefits of subscribing to my channel so that's it everybody thanks for watching and I'll talk to everybody later Bye.